Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how not to make a fabric mermaid tail. Let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is Angelica and you're watching Passion for DIY, a channel where usually I show you how to make some really cool DIYs and mermaid related things. So if you're interested in that, feel free to click subscribe down below. But Today I'm going to show you how not to make a mermaid tail. So as some of you may know, in the past I've made two silicone mermaid tails and this is kind of how my mermaid journey began. But this is not the right way. Usually you're supposed to get a fabric tail first or make a fabric tail first just to, you know, check if you want to do this and if you enjoy it, if you feel comfortable swimming in a mermaid tail and kind of to learn the basics. I went the other way around, a completely wrong way. Don't do that. And I made two silicone tails first. But one of my mermaid friends actually encouraged me to get myself a fabric tail as well. And I did. And I've got to tell you, I fell in love with fabric tails. I was always that kind of mermaid who was like, silicone or you're not a mermaid. But thinking back, what? Goo -goo. So when I think of a silicone tail, I kind of think of it as a beautiful ball gown. So it's not very practical and you don't wear it too often, but a fabric tail is kind of like a summer dress. It still looks cute, it's comfortable, it's flowy, it's nice, it's easy to wear, you can wear it every day in summer, I suppose. But a ball gown is a spectacular and you only wear it a couple times. So this is kind of how I feel about tails. So your beautiful silicone tail will be your ball gown, but your um, fabric tail will be kind of like a summer dress. So. So when I got my fabric tail, I was completely mind blown. So I didn't realize how big the difference was. I just thought, oh, it's just a piece of fabric, like what's the point? But when I tried it on and when I uh, used it a few times, I realized how easy it is to dry it, to carry it around with me. I can just chuck it in my bag and decide whether I want to go to the pool or not. And they're super easy to dry as well, way easier to swim in. And you can share it with friends as well if you're similar sizes because they're not made to fit specifically you and they're very stretchy so yeah I kind of fell in love with the idea of fabric tails and since I've already made two silicone tails that were made with um, two different techniques I wanted to try out and make a fabric tail but anyway the story begins at the end of last year I went to the fabric store it was a tiny tiny fabric store but I found two beautiful fabrics. One of them was this amazing blue sparkly fabric that really, really reminded me of Anastasia. If, so if you've seen Anastasia, you might have seen that beautiful blue dress. That's exactly what I thought when I saw this fabric. And I thought, wow, amazing. I've got red hair at the moment. I can pull this off, I can make a whole thing out of it, I can make a top and a tail and make an Anastasia themed mermaid thingamabob, I don't know what I was thinking. So the other fabric I got was this um, swimsuit material, it was still in navy blue, uh, so it's a similar color. So I was considering making a lining with the kind of swimsuit material and putting the sparkly one on top because I was scared that it was going to be see-through on its own and stuff like that. But then I realized if I put these two fabrics together and go swimming in them, they're gonna blow up like a balloon and they're gonna create a lot of drag and it's just not gonna be good. So I decided to go with the sparkly fabric instead. So I made a pattern out of paper. I just traced my body wearing my mahina and traced the mahina onto the paper as well. Then I stretched the fabric on the floor using some Coke bottles. Yeah, don't ask, that's the only thing I had on hand apparently. And to trace it out and cut it out and have my two pieces that I would then sew together. But something I didn't realize was that the fabric was really, really, really stretchy. I mean, I knew that. It was like a four-way stretch fabric and when I later checked it, it was like a 100% stretch, that makes sense. Like it doubled when you stretch it. So I didn't take that into consideration. I didn't really do any measuring of my body and of the mahina. So I just kind of went with it. 
So I tried the tail on and it fit absolutely fine. I even ended up adding some yellow organza fins. I found this uh, little piece of organza fabric at the charity shop and it was like 10p or something. So I got it, I made some beautiful little fins and I thought it could be almost like um, Dory from Finding Nemo or Finding Dory. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to add some fins, make it a, a little bit more fun. So the first problem I encountered was when I tried to sew the bottom part of my tail, so the monofin part. Of course you have to leave some drainage holes at the bottom so the water flows through the tail smoothly and you don't end up with a huge balloon and you know that drags you down and stuff. So of course I left my drainage holes but then with the mahina and with the shape of it, it kind of the fabric would like ride up and show the mahina so I didn't like that so I ended up sewing the mahina kind of into the monofin but with just two X's at the bottom. So it still had some drainage channels but it was just holding it together in two places at the bottom. So I thought perfect I've got everything figured out I can go for a swim. So I went to the pool and let me show you the swimming footage. The tail actually doesn't look too bad. I absolutely love how it sparkles in the water and it's kind of mystical and, you know, very, very different from what I have already. But as you can tell, at the bottom of the tail, there is so much drag. The fabric just completely stretched out because it was so stretchy and it wasn't fit properly. So the fabric just would stretch at the bottom and create this beautiful, you know, flowy fluke that I didn't intend on having, but I ended up having. Which, I mean, I'm not mad at it. It looks beautiful, but it's absolutely horrible to swim in. I mean, I could probably get used to it. And it was also my first swim of the year after over a month of not swimming, but it just wasn't good. So, here's a little lesson from me to you. If you're going to make a fabric tail, please, please, please consider the stretchiness of your fabric and measure yourself properly and make sure you leave the drainage holes. If you're adding fins, they're gonna add some drag to your tail as well. And yeah, I ended up having just a little tail I could, I don't know, take pictures in or something. But I will be trying to fix it at some point. So the detail wasn't a very long process. It took me about two days to make in total. And I like the way it looks. It looks very, very pretty, but it's not very practical. So remember to think about practicality when you're making a fabric tail. And I'm gonna be making some fabric tails hopefully in the future um, and learn on my mistakes. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Um, I don't really know what this was. It's kind of like a story time slash a tutorial, but not really because I'm telling you how not to do stuff. So basically, don't be a dum-dum. Find a proper tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did because it really, really helps me out. And subscribe down below if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And I'll see you soon. Bye.